All right, let's get this started with a thing mo. The thing goes breaking the collegiate record in mid-April, running 157.73 at the Michael Johnson Invitational for the 800 meters. And so this makes her the 10th fastest American of all time. This also gives her the number one time in the world so far this year. And to me, it really just cements that she is the, you know, she's really the favorite for the Bowerman for the women. So a thing mo popping off as usual. I mean, I mean, what do you expect? She's honestly a huge metal threat at Tokyo. So can't wait to see what else she does this year. But breaking the collegiate record just off rip in April. I mean, what else can we say? She is amazing. Hey, what's going on, y'all? Welcome back to MJP TV, where we put track and field first. I'm MJP, and I just want to thank you for tuning in to this first episode of the What Happened on the Track recap. I think that's what I'm going to call this series from now on, so we'll make this episode one. But, you know, had some craziness go on this past week, but we are still here. So if you haven't, make sure you like the video, share it with someone you think would enjoy, and if you haven't, make sure you subscribe as well. And then, if you haven't, hit me up on social media at MJPTV0. But let's get back to my top five takeaways. Okay, next coming at number two, we have Jasmine Camacho Quinn running 12.32 in the 100 meter hurdles. This makes her the seventh fastest woman in history and is currently the number one time in the world for the women's 100 meter hurdles. And the crazy part about this, after looking at her Instagram post, she is doing this without having a true training partner. She's still in the training group, but she doesn't have another hurdler or female hurdler to train with her at practice. And she's hitting these heights in April. And right now, she's killing the competition. Um, you know, the women's 100 meter hurdles, honestly, is one of the most competitive events in the world, and especially here in America. We're You're a big, big dummy there. I'm not kidding you. You're a big dummy. We have so many top hurdlers competing for those three Olympic spots. So it's going to be really interesting to also see what happens at the trials this year. Right now, she's killing it. So I really can't wait to see how things unfold from here. Okay, next coming in at number three, we have Sha'Carri Richardson running 22:11 in the 200. And so this gives her the second fastest time in the world. But what's really impressive about this run is she did it in the wet while it was raining. And this is down at the Tom Jones Invitational in Florida. And, you know, this for me really positions herself as a threat for the double in Tokyo for the 100 meters and the 200 meters, where she has the number one time in the world in the 100. And she has the number two time only behind Shawnee Miller Weibo in the 200. So she's really America's, you know, powerhouse right now for female sprinting. And we'll see what she can do up against the likes of Shelly Ann Fraser Price, you know, Lane Thompson, and Dina Asher Smith coming up in the Olympics. And so, of course, that's assuming she makes the team, which she's gonna make the team, of course. But we shall see. You know, I'm looking forward to seeing how consistent she can be throughout the season, but I have high hopes for her. Okay, next, coming in at number four, which is probably my favorite race of the weekend, was Jones, Jones. running 9.93 in the 993 from Florida State. And so this run uh, gives him the number one time in the world tied with Ronnie Baker. And so this is, of course, the number one time in the NCAA. And this was also at the Tom Jones Invitational in Florida. And this actually massively improves on his non win aided PR of 10.4 back when he was at Sam Houston. And this is even faster than his best win aided time of 10.17. So he just had an amazing race. If you go back and look at it, his form is immaculate. He's making sure his foot is coming over his knee. He has great front side mechanics and great arm swing. And this is, you know, just really good for uh, the U.S. for the men on the 100 meter side because it's really up in the air, you know, who's going to represent us in the 100 meters. So he has stuck his name out there as one of the people to look out for at these upcoming Olympic trials. I'm telling y'all, track and field is going crazy this year. Okay, coming in at number five and last but certainly not least was Terrence Leary versus Sean Maswangami in U of H versus LSU at the LSU home meet. And so in the 100 meters, Terrence Leard took the victory with a new PR of 10.06 seconds and currently has the number three time in the nation. Sean came in second, tying his own personal 100 meter PR with a 10.18. And so this is the current number uh, eight time in the nation. But where things really got spicy was in the 4x1 where... Split in the middle. Hey, make the two Her. 
Harden. Hmm. LSU evened up their 4x1 series 1-1, to taking the victory with a time of 38.82, and U of H coming in second with a time of 39 flat. And so these times were a bit slower than what both teams ran at Texas Relays, but Terrence Leard, again, threw down on the last leg. The top speed he hit was absolutely ridiculous. He had great hand speed, great technique, and he was completely relaxed all the way throughout. And so I really can't wait to see them throw down again at regionals and then at nationals. It's going to be great. I think, I honestly think if they can get their exchanges right and everyone works on their top end speed, both of these teams could really challenge uh, the national record in the 4x1. Okay, and that's all I have for you guys today. I just want to say I really appreciate all the support you've been showing. It's been crazy these past couple of days, but we're getting through it. And again, y'all are amazing. Y'all are changing my life literally by the day. So God bless. Y'all take care.